The coronavirus is changing the way we full-time RV. We share what we're doing as I hope for the best. And I prepare for the worst. Today's video is supposed to be a tour of our new rig, but uh, as it turns out, it's not going to be about coronavirus. That's right. We just felt like what's happening now is happening so fast and is so intense that we want to share with you what we are doing. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz and this is Paul. These are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And it's been difficult to live amazing and push past fear uh, with all the goings on with the coronavirus um, situation that's out there. It drove it home for me yesterday, the last few days actually. Uh, we've been stocking up on, on uh, supplies and going to the store. The shelves are emptying and it's... Uh, There's no toilet paper in town at all. No hand sanitizer. Canned goods are, are getting very scarce in the stores. Virtually no soup left, no canned soup left. No canned vegetables. Clorox wipes or, or whatever brand you choose are, are, are non-existent. It doesn't matter which brand you want, they're just not there. Well, yesterday I went to an Aldi's, I went to a, a Food for Less, I went to a Trader Joe's. The day before we went to a Costco. It's the same story everywhere. If you watch the news, and I'm sure you have, you see all of the people being infected. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people are dying. So these are really, you know, <laughs> very strange times and here we are we're full-time RVers we're out in the country we're you know across the country far away from our community our neighborhood of old our family our friends we're, we're just away from all that and it's making us feel really vulnerable and we thought that we would share what changes we're making now that the coronavirus is really becoming a, a big deal. We're not claiming to be experts or anything like that, but we want to share with you how this is affecting us as full-time RVers. Which, to begin, we about a week ago, a little more than a week ago now, I kind of saw this happening, saw what was happening in Italy and China, and decided that, that we needed to change our plans because we, Today, as a matter of fact, we were going to travel north. Right, we're, in, we're on the California coast right now, and this turmoil left both of us feeling, particularly Paul, feeling very unsettled. And um, as time went on, I too started feeling unsettled. And the gist of it was, we just didn't feel like traveling. Yeah, I just figured we should stay in place for at least a month and then reevaluate at the, towards the middle of April and decide then what whether we're going to stay put a little longer or or um, continue with our travels from that point on yeah so we're actually staying in place for six weeks until the end of april we changed all our plans because we just didn't want to add to any turmoil or stress by traveling. Well, actually what we did was we built a criteria of what we wanted to do as far as where we wanted to be for the next, you know, four, six weeks. So we didn't want to be in a major metro area. Um, no crowds, yeah. no big populations. We don't want to be amongst hundreds of people. So the first thing we did was we looked at remote areas and we decided, well, that'll be too remote. We didn't want to be so far away from everyone that it would be also difficult to get groceries or we'd be burning a lot of diesel fuel just to go into town to get something. Being the, I'm not a prepper, but I... <laughs> He's borderline prepper, I am borderline border, I, order. I am borderline, so, uh, <laughs> but my fear is that if this thing gets really bad, fuel, it might be hard to get and I didn't want to be out too far away from a city to where I could, where we'd be stranded on the road somewhere with no fuel and... That was another reason why we didn't want to travel. We wanted a campground where we could actually ride our bikes to the grocery and that's what we found. Yeah, we're two miles from Avon, so I mean that's that's very doable. We have e-bikes, so two miles is a is a walk in the park with an e-bike. Uh, put a backpack on and you're, you're good to go shopping. It's we also looked at, if we're gonna be in place, we don't wanna be bored. Uh, so a key thing for us was weather. So we chose a place on the California coast where the weather's mild, although right now it's raining and crazy. We wanted to have internet connect connectivity. Um, 
And we have good internet here, so I can stream videos. One, if not both of us, get grumpy <laughs> if we don't have internet. What are you talking about? <laughs> about two weeks ago, we started thinking that, that we needed to be able to sustain ourselves for at least a month. In the worst case scenario, the markets could close. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's even happened in Italy where they've pretty much closed the borders of the country. Currently, while we're recording this, uh, France, Spain, Belgium, and Poland, uh, and Italy have closed their borders and they've closed everything but the markets and the pharmacies yeah. in, in those countries. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we're looking at that foretelling as what's happening here. And uh, so a couple weeks ago, I kind of laughed at Paul because, um, so I'm a hope for the best person and he's a I'm a plan for the worst. Yeah. yeah. So we have, we've stocked up and we now have a 10 pound bag of rice. Yeah. 10 yeah. pounds of oatmeal. Well, we're... that's me. <laughs> I had to get the oatmeal. We're a little light on soup. If we can go to the groceries, assuming that they stay open, if we can get uh, vegetables and, and some stew meat, I, I can make soup. We do have the Instant Pot, which is going to come in handy. <laughs> we still have the Instant Pot, yeah. so yeah. In fact, and... I'm going to make navy beans with uh, ham hocks here this afternoon, so yum. So part of the reason why you know we're buying all this food is we do feel pretty vulnerable since we're out here by ourselves. It's not like we're living in our home on a, on a neighborhood street where people can come in and help us. We feel like we have to fend for ourselves. Where we are now, we haven't been here long enough to connect with that many people. So we feel that we're kind of on our own and we feel like we need to make sure that we take care of ourselves. If we're not healthy, then, then everything goes downhill from there. For those of you that are not on the road or have, are planning to go on the road, I think that's one of the biggest changes that I still struggle with about this life is I don't have my community. I don't have my weekly yoga class, my neighbors, my spiritual group that I went to every Sunday. I don't have the ladies that I lunch with every week. I don't have my circle of women and all that. So if I had not hit the road and I was still at home, I know that somebody would check on me. That if I needed something, somebody would drop something on my doorstep and that I would be taken care of. There's also the uncertainty of whether the parks that we're staying at, the park that we're staying at, um, will stay open. Uh, there, there are long-term residents here, so I don't see them closing. But since this has never happened in my lifetime, mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to say what's going to happen. Right. And we know that all the state parks closed in uh, New Mexico, some in Florida, some in Pennsylvania. And this is not a state-run campground we're in, but... It is corporate run and you know we, we don't know we don't know what they'll do so that's part of our uncertainty and so plan b for us is to maybe go across country back to my hometown of lexington kentucky and we have at least one driveway offered to us where we can mooch dock if need be and we may have to do that we just we don't know what's going to happen just like you all don't know what's going to happen i think that's the scariest part it certainly is for me the fear of the unknown um, and this thing could go, go sideways so fast. I was watching a video just before we started shooting this of Dr. Fauci, the uh, director of the National Institute of Infectious Disease. He's talking about lockdown in the mm -hmm. country. Um, and he tempered it by saying that basically it's just restaurants and bars are gonna be closing. The grocery stores would, would still be open in his scenario. I don't even want to think about what happens if the grocery stores close in, in the country or, or anywhere. That would be total chaos. Not to scare y'all, but, but... Yeah, we hope not. And again, you know, hope for the best, prepare for the worst, right? Yeah. So this is new for us um, to be staying in one place for what will end up being a total of eight weeks. We've never done that. We've both been on the road for over a year. This yeah. is my 18th month and I haven't stayed in one place for more than three, well, I stayed in one one place for about four weeks once. And that by the end of that four weeks, I was ready to go. I was getting stir crazy. So one of the things that, you know, that I'm really concerned about is, you know, how do we keep our mental health, our mental well-being in a good place? We don't want to just sit and worry, worry, worry. And, you know, and it's hard not to do that in these times. I watch a lot of YouTube videos and and the stuff that's coming into my feed right now is all coronavirus related because that's what i've been watching and and it's it's mostly negative it's and yeah. uh it and i know it doesn't do well for my state of mind um so i'm trying to temper i'm i'm trying to watch other videos you know fun stuff 
uh, bicycle videos and, and uh, drag racing videos, the stuff that, that I like to do. And we're also committed to a routine of like we jog every morning, we ride our bikes. Anytime the weather's good, we're out there, we walk mango. And I think that's really important for anyone who is hunkered down like we are, is to make sure that you get out and enjoy what's around you, get some fresh air and follow a routine and have things to keep you busy. On that note, we're gonna be going to a Goodwill pretty soon, right? A Goodwill? Yeah. For? What are we going to Goodwill for? <laughs> Remember, we're going to get board games. Oh, board games. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, so. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> so we're going to get some something to keep us busy um, because, you know, it'll be just the two of us in a small space. And, of course, we will be getting out. But we're so used to uh, traveling and doing more. Um, yeah. But we're also going to take some day trips. Yeah. Explore. We're not going to we're not going to stay in the trailer the whole time. I mean, yeah. No. As Liz said, we're in, we're in the central coast of California. There's a lot of things. There's wineries around here. There's a loofah farm. <laughs> now, with all that said, I still think we're very lucky to be living the life that we are. Mm -hmm. um, even with all my fears of what could potentially happen, I think we're well situated. I mean, our house is on wheels. If things, you know, things get uh, really bad, we could pack up and go. That's the good thing about this life is, you know, we have 90 gallons of fresh water with us. We don't have to stockpile water like we've been seeing people do at the grocery. We know that there are lots of people out there that are far worse than us. People that live paycheck to paycheck or are in an area that's a hot spot and they can't leave or maybe they've got, uh, you know, health issues and are, are very, very concerned about the coronavirus as they should be. So, um, so we do consider ourselves lucky. And uh, as a matter of fact, we were just talking about doing some volunteer work to help others that are in need and not in as a, a great position as we are. Take advantage of the fact that we're healthy and we can pitch in where we're needed. So we're going to reach out in the, in the local community and see if there's some organizations that need our help. Yeah, yeah maybe there's some shut-ins who need someone to deliver food because they have a compromised immune system or something like that. Yeah. And we're so grateful and we also want to shout out to the A-Team. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you all are well and are safe and are doing what you need to continue to be safe. We are hunkered down as we imagine a lot of others are too. Yeah, stay well. Take care of each other. Um, it's going to get rough. Yeah, we need each other in these times for sure. We do. We do. So, so take care of yourself and help others in need.